Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel Learn English with Hamid. I'm sure you like my channel and I'm sure you find the videos useful. Dear viewers, today we do a vocabulary lesson and I'm sure you know vocabulary is a very important part of second language learning. Good learners try to use, uh, good learners try to improve their vocabulary on daily basis. So that's why I thought we should do a vocabulary lesson today. So we're going to discuss uh, idioms and we're going to discuss rhyming pairs and idioms. But before we do that, please like, share and subscribe to my channel and let's get started. Rhyming pairs and idioms. This is what we're going to discuss today. And we are going to discuss five idioms. Before we do that, I want you to have a look at the definition of an idiom first. What is an idiom? Well, an idiom is a group of words, a phrase. An idiom, an idiom is always a group of words. It's never one word and uh, probably it's never a complete sentence. So it's a group of words whose meaning is always different from the meaning of the individual words. So it's a phrase and um, what the individual words in that phrase means usually doesn't help us to guess the meaning of the idiom. For example, the idiom let the cat out of the bag means to tell a secret. Now we know what cat is, what bag is, but we can never guess the meaning of this idiom. So this, uh, the meaning of the idiom is different from the individual words. <coughs> Sorry. What's uh, meant by rhyming pairs in idioms? Well, rhyming pairs in idioms means um, idioms which are in pairs, like two words, and they're joined by and. And these words rhyme as well. So rhyming pairs in idioms are two words with rhyme with each other and they're joined by and. For example, uh, doom and gloom. So, doom and gloom words rhyme with each other and there is this connecting word, the conjunction and between them. So, doom and gloom uh, means a general feeling of hopelessness and pessimism. So, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> uh, it is said in a situation when people are hopeless. For example, she might say she was full of uh, doom and gloom. <coughs> it's not all doom and gloom and there is lots to look forward to. So it's not all disappointment, it's not, not all hopelessness. We have a lot of positive things and we should be happy about that. So doom and gloom is the first idiom. The second idiom is the rhyming pair. Fair and square. <clears throat> fair and square or fairly or and squarely. All these idioms that we're discussing today have the word, the conjunction, and between them. So fairly and squarely or fair and square means honestly and according to the rules. So this idiom will be used uh, most probably with reference to games, uh, elections, for example. So they said they had won the election fair and square, like according to the rules. No shenanigans. They won the match fair and square. They won the match and they did it honestly. The third idiom is high and dry. <coughs> so you see that uh, we know the meaning of the individual words high, we know the meaning of the word dry. But these words don't help us to know the meaning of this idiom. And the meaning is to be in a helpless position. So for example, the inadequate supplies of vaccine left many people high and dry when the flu season arrived. <clears throat> so when many people were in a helpless position and they had no hope, maybe, but they were definitely in a helpless position and because they had no uh, vaccine. So high and dry means to, in, to be in a helpless position. As of today when I'm recording this video, so according to the news, uh, Sri Lankans are high and dry these days. <clears throat> Four. Fourth idiom is half and puff, which have two meanings. Yes, an idiom may have more than one meaning as well. So to breathe in a loud and heavy way because of physical effort. Like someone was, he was huffing and puffing. Why? Because he got to the top of the stairs, climbed to the top of the stairs. 
Maybe he was fat, like me. <laughs> and after he climbed the stairs, he was huffing and puffing. The second meaning is to show that you're annoyed, angry. The example sentence is, she'll huff and puff for a while. Like when we tell her the news, or when she'll come to know about something, something bad, of course, she'll huff and puff, like complain, will be angry for some time, but she'll calm down later. For example, an example sentence. The last idiom is to name and shame someone. To name and shame someone. Which means to identify those people who have done something wrong and publish their names. And this is usually done by journalists. So a recent example is the WikiLeaks. So WikiLeaks were leaks in which the WikiLeaks named and shamed many politicians around the globe. Like they identify those who have been involved in corrupt practices. The example sentence here is we intend to name and shame companies which use child labor. Uh, a website might do this or uh, again a journalist might publish the name uh, the names of those companies which use child labor so they might say yes we want to we intend to we plan to name and shame those companies which are using child labor. And that's what we have for today. Stay tuned for more. Dearios, did you find the video useful? I'm sure you did. These uh, idioms are kind of poetic because they rhyme and I'm sure you like them. So this was the end of part one. I'm going to do part two soon. And before we leave, please like, share and subscribe to my channel and please ring the bell for more notification. See you.